Well, hello, Shoreline Church. It's hard to believe that we're coming near the end of January. Uh, 2021 is flying right along. I'm praying that God just speaks wisdom to your heart and wisdom to your mind and the transforming power of the Word of God and His truth that just guides every step you take. And so we're going to continue walking through the book of Proverbs, God's wisdom for our daily lives. And today we're in chapter 4, verses 4 through 8. Listen to these words of wisdom and, and let the Holy Spirit speak to your heart. It says, then he taught me and he said to me, take hold of my words with all your heart. Keep my commands and you will live. Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget my words or turn away from them. Do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you. Love her and she will watch over you. Very personal. And I love this line, the beginning of verse seven. The beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom. I love that. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get it. Get wisdom. Though it costs you all you have, get understanding. Cherish her and she will exalt you. Embrace her and she will honor you. Can you feel the urgency? It says it's so important that we walk in wisdom, that we grow in wisdom, that we, that we follow what God's word says to us. So just a couple of thoughts from chapter four of Proverbs. First, make wisdom a priority. You know, say, I want to be a person who really grows in wisdom. Where do you get your wisdom? Do you get it from the news? Do you get it from friends of yours? Well, if you're getting it from the news, make sure it's people speaking who have wisdom. If you're getting input from friends, make sure that they speak with wisdom. Be careful where you're getting the input that forms your thinking. And, and I tell you what, if you want to really grow in wisdom, read this book. The whole book of the Bible, but the book of Proverbs. I know people, and I've shared this before, but I know people that over the course of a month, just day one of the month, on the first, they read Proverbs chapter one. Day two, Proverbs chapter two. And they do their own other Bible study, but every day they read a chapter of Proverbs, just letting God breathe wisdom into them. Another thought from this passage, and I love it, and I, and I highlighted it when I read the passage, but in verse seven where it says, you know, here's the beginning of wisdom. Get it. It's like saying, here's the beginning of, of consuming food. Get a hamburger, you know, it's like it's, it's basic, but it's saying, if you want wisdom, get it. Why is it, why is it put with such bluntness? Because we can all say, you know, you can say, I can say, man, I want wisdom. I want to grow in wisdom. What are you doing to get it? Are you surrounding yourself with people who speak words from God? When you have spare time, are you listening to things that, that feed God's wisdom into your mind or just the oceans of garbage that's out there that you can fill your mind with. Here's the beginning of wisdom. Get wisdom. And then there's a sense, this call to cherish and to embrace wisdom. It's so valuable. It's so important. If something's important to you, you watch over it. You protect it. You take good care of it. Uh, Thomas was filming this, and I were talking about books before I just began filming. And look, I'm in my library at the church. And so I was, I was showing him a book that is close to 200 years old. And he looked at the date. I said, it's over 100 years old. He goes, hey, that's close to 200 years old. It's about 175 years old book. But it's behind glass in my study. I protect that. Why? Because it's fragile. Because if I don't care for it, it's going to deteriorate. Well, wisdom's like that. Nurture it. Care for it. Grow wisdom in your heart. So one little story uh, as we finish thinking about Proverbs chapter 4. When I was 15 years old, I was given my first Bible. And this book is full of wisdom. I had never held the Bible before. I'd really never heard the Bible. I was so new to the Christian faith. And at 15 years old, I just realized if I would read this book, if I would meditate on it, memorize passages, let it fill my thinking and fill my heart, it would change my life. Uh, there are some people who know me that actually think I have some wisdom. <laughs> Not everybody, but there's people who know me, they go, well, you've got a lot of wisdom. And when people say that to me, I'll say, you know what? I really don't. Uh, I, I'm still the same clown I was when I was 15 years old without, without God's word, without God's wisdom. I've learned some lessons in life, but the vast majority of the wisdom that I have for being a husband, for being a dad, for being a friend, for being a pastor, it comes from feasting on this book. So the beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. If you want wisdom, dig into the word of God. Let me pray for you. And I want to encourage you this coming Sunday to join us. Uh, if the weather's good, we'll be outdoors and online. If the weather's not good, we'll be online. But I look forward to seeing you, whether it's online or on campus, uh, together with God's people to worship. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for the truth of your word. 
Thank you that we don't have to wander through this world stumbling over our own feet, but we can look to you and find out how to walk in true wisdom. Let us get wisdom, let us revere it and hold on to it, and then, Lord, let us live it out with every choice we make. And God, if we're tapped into sources of folly and things that work against your wisdom, if, we, if we're pouring things into our mind and our hearts that are contrary to your wisdom, help us cut off those sources and open ourselves more and more to the wisdom you want us to have. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day, a great rest of the week. Walk in wisdom, and we'll see you on Sunday.